Now you might think this car looks empty, but just this morning there was a lot of stuff inside of it. And that's why I brought this. Yo, what's poppin'? Today, I am at a park. I've got a little bit of time to fish, and we are going to be fishing with the Daiwa Presso four-piece travel ultralight rod. I am actually on my way to a wedding this weekend, but I made a pit stop, dropped my wife and child off at my in-laws, and uh, my car was locked and loaded with diaper bag, stroller, all sorts of things today, and I just simply didn't have room for a fishing pole, except for this little guy right here. So really ultimately today's goal is to talk about this rod. Um, it's another ultralight rod breakdown as you guys have become very familiar with. Um, and hopefully we can catch some fish. I've never been here before. It's like this little park, it looks really good. And uh, I'm thinking we can catch some fish. So let's get started. Okay, the lake's behind me. I've never been here in my life, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna catch some fish. And uh, like I said, this is the Daiwa Presso four-piece travel ultralight. And my friends, I have fished with this thing for over a year now and I've used it a ton and I've caught a ton of fish on it. But today I wanna talk specifically about it. I've never really talked about it a lot. I've said I like it, but I'm gonna talk about why I like it. And obviously I've been experimenting with a lot of ultralight rods over the last year. So I've got a lot of rods I can technically compare this to. Um, and I gotta say, like the rod, but let's talk about why. So let's put this puppy together and then let's catch some fish. And you can see four pieces in there. They're all snug as a bug in a rug. Zip. Just like any other multi-piece rod, just slip it on there. You just do that three times. Pretty simple, my friends, pretty simple. It's not rocket science. Okay, we just took four pieces and we turned it into one five foot six piece. All right, I'm gonna run the line through the guides. We're gonna rig something up. We're gonna go catch fish. Remember recently when I dropped this camera in the water? I'm not gonna let that happen again today. I'm going to safely put it back in its pelican case where it belongs. Secured. No more mistakes, Ethan. No more mistakes. I tell you what, whether you make videos or anything else, these pelican cases are sick. Huge fan. As always, we're rocking the fanny pack. I don't know if a jerkbait's gonna work or not, but I figure, let's do it. Little uh, Yozuri Pins minnow. I'm gonna start with this. If it doesn't work, I'll go to the uh, tried and true mule jig, but I wanna try the jerkbait. Set that case right there. That's a good spot for it. This water's pretty clear. Okay, now that we're settled and starting to fish, why don't we talk about this rod a little bit? For those of you who have been watching my YouTube channel for a while, you obviously have seen me fish with this rod probably several times, and you've probably seen me catch a lot of fish on it. And you obviously know that I like it because I've talked it up a lot. And the reason I like it is because, yes, this is a four-piece rod, but it honestly performs like a one-piece rod. Usually when you buy a multi-piece rod, it increases the weight pretty drastically, but what I've found is with this Presso, it honestly feels pretty light still. I don't necessarily notice it being heavier. The other thing is, with all four pieces, it still balances really well. Well, maybe just a little tip heavy, but not bad. Okay, I'm gonna take off the jerk bait. I'm not feeling it. It's not gonna work. Okay, back to the tried and true. I'm going with a 164th ounce chartreuse mule jig with a Dakota Sunrise horsefly. Stretch that over the top of the keeper and snap and perfect. You know what else? I guess I haven't talked about the specs. Does this thing have specs? Yes, it does. This is a five foot six ultralight, fast action. One thirty second to one quarter ounce. That's very typical. Line, one to six pound. You know what I've found though? This thing actually casts really lightweight stuff quite well, as long as you pair it with light line. If you use really low diameter line, I find that that's gonna be the biggest difference maker with regards to getting good casting distance. I just quickly whip this thing out there about 30 feet. You know, just a very simple, easy cast. There's a fish. Oh yeah, that didn't take long. Horsefly, first cast. This feels like this might be a crappie. Oh wait, what is this? Nice gill. Okay, okay, okay. Attaway horsefly, good work. Little fall bluegill. My friends, that was a nice little fight on an ultralight. That's a good bluegill. Probably about a seven and a half, eight incher. Nice gill. I saw my line moving. Beautiful, all right, see you buddy. All right, let's see if he's got friends. Right off this little weed line. Anybody else here? Oh, there's a bite. Oh, short striker. That one I felt in the rod tip. You know, that felt like a little bluegill, nipped it. Probably a small guy, but uh, I felt it in the rod tip, so that's good. Four piece rod, you really wouldn't think it'd be very sensitive, but I don't necessarily notice it being any less sensitive than my other ultralights. The one thing that I'll say about this rod, oh yeah, there he is. Has he got it? Yeah, he's got it. The one thing that I'll say about this rod is I think it costs about $79.99, I wanna say. 
Ow, he just dorsal thinned me. Um, and 79.99, I think this is a solid rod. What's cool about this rod is the fact that, you know, you get the transportability, you can stow it anywhere you want. You can bring this thing on an airplane, you can do so many things with it, but it performs just like any other ultralight and you only have to pay a couple extra dollars. I would definitely compare this rod to like a lot of the $50 range rods. Like it feels good. It's not like the best thing I've ever held in my life, but you pay a little bit more and you access so many new fishing opportunities. So that's why I'm just such a huge fan of this thing. And uh, I definitely love owning it. I wish I was wearing a hoodie. I wish I was wearing a hoodie. I wish I was wearing a hoodie because I'm pretty cold there's another fish all right oh he's gonna get me down the reeds good thing he's not that big if that would have been a 10 inch gill i'd have been toast freaking chomped that thank goodness i'm wearing my fanny pack right now folks you want to know why boom that's why got my uh, handy dandy forceps or whatever you call these things little guy we're gonna catch another one. Oh yeah right there come and get it oh there's a bite he's got it yes sir Gotta skate him on top. Go, 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 get through the reeds. <laughs> oh, okay, there's a lot of fish in here, I think. Okay, let's talk about the rod a little bit more. Let's uh, kind of try to show you how this rod plays fish out. I've been kind of just trying to horse them in just because they're little gills and I don't want them getting down in those reeds. Oh my gosh, just tanked it, just torched it, dude. Okay, that's another small one. But anyways, let's just show you kind of the flex of this rod. Eh. We're gonna have to show you the flex of this rod on another fish because uh, these reeds are just getting in the way. And another bluegill, a little dink. God, there's a pile of them next to these reeds, man. Oh, he was holding it. He still got it? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it's madness. Holy smokes, a pike just came and ate my fish. Are you kidding me? A pike literally just came, sprinted up in the reeds and literally bit off my bluegill and uh, my line's toast. It was like a little dinky bluegill about that big. I don't know if you saw the flash, but it was not a very big pike. He was probably only about, I don't know, 16 inches. He was dinky, but I just saw him scream up. I was like, what is that? And all of a sudden, as soon as he screams up, my line just breaks. So he must have either bit my line or bit the gill. And I don't know what the heck happened there, but I just lost my jig and my horsefly and I'm kind of annoyed by that. Okay, well that was really strange and I don't fully understand what just happened, but I just went ahead and rigged up the same thing because I'm having fun with these bluegill. Um, I don't really have anything to target pike with. I mean, I'm using two pound monofilament for crying out loud. Um, so if we catch a pike, it's just totally luck. He's got it. Oh yeah, that feels like a decent one. Oh, get him out of the reeds. Okay, let's hope that we don't make a meal out of any more bluegill. From what I can tell, there does not seem to be any shortage of bluegill in this lake, so I don't know if I'm necessarily that worried if a pike makes a snack out of one of these, but at the same time, I don't want to break off any more jigs. There's just a ton in this little uh, area next to these reeds. It's just ridiculous. Speaking of, there's another one. All right, now watch him. Oh no, he's down in the reeds. Get out of the reeds. Get out of the reeds, it! Thank you, I pulled him out, okay. All right, see you buddy. Okay, okay, oh my gosh, right when I hit the water. There, let's get him over here. Okay, you can see that rod. You can see how it kind of flexes down the blank, but not too terribly much. Um, hopefully that kind of showed it a little bit, um, but you can definitely tell that it is a fast action. Probably on the lower side of fast, but it's still a fast. Man, these things are floppy. Floppy bluegill, man. There he is, oh baby. That feels like a decent one, he's not bad. Not good, but not bad. Golly. This is definitely fun. These are all kind of bonus fish. I didn't really know if I was gonna catch a whole lot today or not because, you know, as I've mentioned about 75 times, never been here in my life. But thank goodness I'm here because this is great. This is working out. I'm gonna stop fishing that area for a few seconds. I'm gonna try some, I'm gonna try some other spots because, uh, oh, there. I wanna try to find a bigger gill like that one. A little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. We're gonna fish off in front of the reeds a little bit more. See if we can't find some bigger ones. That one's definitely bigger than the last several I've caught, so that's good. Good sign. Okay, we're just pounding them, man. They're it's feeding frenzy. Feeding frenzy off this dock right now. There, you guys can kind of see how that bends. I don't know, I would definitely consider it a fast. While this rod definitely feels like a fast, I still think that it's it's soft enough to where you can still throw some treble hook baits too. So I would consider this actually a pretty versatile rod. I actually think it's kind of similar to the Temple Fork, except it's a four piece. Um, I like the Temple Fork more, um, and I prefer the either one or two piece, but I would say it's a similar ultralight. 
you know, as far as aesthetics go, obviously it's like the black and orange color, looks really good, but the rod handle is very minimalist. It's very sleek. Um, it's really thin and uh, obviously split grip. So I think they did that intentionally to really cut down on weight. And I really think that was a good idea because it is a four piece rod. Taking weight away anywhere you can is a great idea. Um, I will say with a normal, hey, cool, a fish. I will say with a normal ultralight, I would prefer just a little bit thicker rod butt. It's a little bit more comfortable for me. Um, but for this one, I think they nailed it. So I'm a huge fan. Also, uh, I tried a different spot. I tried the opposite side and uh, small bluegill are over here too. I honestly don't even think there's anywhere else on this lake I'm gonna be able to fish. I'm pretty much just limited to this dock right here because everywhere else is way too shallow. Oh yeah. There we go, there we go. Take a look at that rod. This has gotta be a decent one. It's fighting a lot better. Maybe it's just a dink that's got some pull in him or maybe it's a bass or maybe, oh baby, oh baby. That's a freaking tank. That's a freaking tank, Gil. Oh gosh. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me right now? I'll just uh, mark this later. This is probably a nine inch fish. It goes from the tip of the rod cork right here all the way to this little orange line. Okay, that's a mental note. It actually exceeds the orange line just a tiny bit. Um, mental note, I'm gonna have to go measure that later. I do not have a ruler with me. Oh gosh, stop. Well, he's got a concussion, but I think he'll be okay. See you, buddy. Okay, cool. Well, we just got a donkey. Um, the fishing has slowed down a ton, but evidently the big girls are still around. There he is, got him. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. That's fun. When you see the chartreuse head and then it just disappears, set the hook. That, my friends, is fun. I don't care what size the fish. It's like a visual strike and it's a blast. It's not a bad one, little guy. Got him. <laughs> just a little feisty guy down there in the reeds. I just wanted to catch one more. What can I say? It's never quite enough now, is it, folks? All right, cool. I'm getting cold. I got to go in. A rod that you can store in something this small, gotta love it. I'm cold. Okay, I tell you what, even though I am cold, I gotta say, as always, this Daiwa Presso travel rod, it always impresses me and it's always a blast to fish with. I've fished with it for some time now, as I've mentioned, and I have no complaints, really. I think for the price point, it is a lot of bang for the buck. Why? Because you have an ultralight rod that performs really well and honestly feels like a one-piece rod, but, you can store it in a container this size, which is pretty darn cool. I have actually never fished with any other travel ultralights, so if I happen to stumble upon some other travel ultralights, maybe we'll do a comparison at some point. But for the time being, I would say that for like the $80 price range, Good rod. Solid rod. Okay, I have rambled far long enough. If you want to see more ultralight fishing videos, make sure to stay tuned. Click that subscribe button below. Otherwise, I'm going to turn on the heater and I'm going to get the heck out of here. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.